Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to It's Poppin' where we talk about everything pop-up camper related. So just a quick aside before we get into the video, I know 9 out of 10 of you guys aren't subscribed, so if you get value or enjoy these videos, please consider subscribing. Alright, so this is going to be part 4 of the free pop-up camper renovation series, and just to let you guys know what I plan on doing, um, I hope to check out that lifting system spring, see if that might be the culprit for the awful noise that it makes when uh, the roof is lifting up. If, if it is, might end up replacing it, um, might not. I did a little research and I know I have to take off the water holding tank in order to get to, um, in order to get to some of the bolts that hold on the lift system. So I'm gonna take that off, might as well clean it up while it's off and um, accessible. I also wanna clean up the front box where the seal is, take off the old seal, clean it up, put on a new seal. So hopefully, um, it stays watertight and then uh, finally I just need to get a few new things installed like the eight air conditioner filters um, you know those are quick and easy as well as a new battery and a new propane tank um, also just drop those in and get them hooked up so those shouldn't be a problem we'll see about that lift system now Well guys, I have some explaining to do. Um, so I decided to check out the lift system spring on the back side of the camper because that's the area of the camper that was making the most noise when, when I was raising the roof. So <clears throat> what I did was, um, actually for a while, I tried to take off the, the, I guess, metal tubes that contain the spring that goes up into the um, up into the lift arm. So let me kind of show you what I did here. I pulled off these guys, and these hold on. These hold the uh, spring. But what the factory did is they, and I assume this is inadvertent. There was a screw going down this way that ended up right through this plate right here. So what I ended up having to do was cut a corner of this off because I couldn't get a good angle to cut that screw off, which allowed me to remove this. And then by allowing me to remove this, I was able to it's go up right here and grind off this bolt, which you can kind of see. So that's what made getting off those tubes so difficult. And those tubes are what contain the lift system spring, like I said. So here's what we got going on with the spring. If I show you both side by side, see how that kind of kinks? I believe that is what's causing all that um, noise when I go to lift it up. If you remember before I was talking about these um, air valves, well, sure enough, it looks like there's something in at least two of them that is partially blocked. Only one of them has, uh, looks like it's clear of whatever got in there. So the first thing I think I wanna do is get the pressure washer back out and pressure wash off that um, water holding tank along with um, some other components like the uh, refrigerator um, cover and uh, also I'll just do the brackets that hold up the um, water holding tank as well so we'll get those all cleaned up and looking good. All right there's the uh, water holding tank that cleaned up really well um, although it's not surprising considering that literally sits under the camper and uh, gets all that road dust and dirt and such. So here's the next thing I think I want to do, you guys. You see how these seals on the uh, front storage box are coming off? What I want to do is actually completely take this off. And then what I'm going to do is completely clean up this surface here so we have um, a nice clean surface to adhere to. Right, I did my best to get the remaining um, stick off of this camper. 
um, off the uh, front box of the camper. So what ultimately worked was a combination of uh, the Mean Green degreaser and some isopropyl alcohol. Um, it's not 100%, but given what I have available, it's the best I could do. And I just wanted it clean enough to re-adhere one of those seals. I haven't showed you guys this yet, but what I purchased was a uh, seven pin um, connector for the pop-up. It has a four pin on it right now, and the wires are looking pretty bad here. Let me, let me show you. So here's what we got going on with the wiring harness. Obviously all the trailer wires come up right here. Uh, we have one lead that also looks very rough from the battery. Actually, that's kind of hot to the touch. And this one actually has a, the fuse going in. Um, and then of course we have our grounds right here. And this conglomeration all ties up and goes into this four-way connector right here. And then of course we have a couple tied back. Um, so what I wanna do is take this all the way back to about right here-ish, somewhere in this area. And then we're gonna put in our new um, seven pin adapter. As you can see, seven pins. What this has going forward is it's got this nice kind of junction box that I can mount directly to the frame here and then tie in all of our camper um, wires. And it'll make this look a lot cleaner than it currently is. And it'll have the added benefit of having the seven pin, which will allow, of course, the battery to recharge while it's connected to the, um, to the uh, car. Um, this this uh, particular pop-up does not have any electronic brakes. So I think it says blue wire right here. That's uh, kind of a moot point, but at least it'll enable this uh, battery to charge while uh, it's connected up to the, to the car. Alright, so I'm happy to report that we have lights. <laughs> there was a bit of a scare um, with this back right light. It wasn't turning on with the brakes or the blinker, but fortunately it was just a simple fix. It was a burnt out bulb. So I replaced the bulb and um, now it's all, they're all working on 100%. And uh, we're also indicating that we're getting a charge on the battery. So everything looks like it's working as it should, which uh, I was happy about. Sometimes the colors can be off or whatever, but everything matched up well. So we have a seven pin connector now. Check it out guys, we got some new stuff. So this is gonna be the seal um, to go in the front box lid. Here are the um, air conditioner filters. These are um, cut to size, so I'll have to uh, take these out and cut them down to size um, once we get the camper popped up. But more importantly, the lift system spring came in. Let's bust into this thing and see how it looks. Hopefully it doesn't come flying out at me. 
I feel as though I should be careful uh, opening this, considering it's a spring. Okay, let's see. Let's... Okay, good. They got it uh, zip tied up. But man, yeah, look at that. That looks great. That looks a lot better compared to the... Whoa! Okay, that's what I was scared of. <laughs> but this looks a lot better than the old one. All right, here's the new one. Look how much better that looks than the old one, especially where it's all rusted out. Let me get this installed and uh, we'll get a, give it a test run. Okay, so I got the springs fed through the tubes here, just to the point where they're right here. Now, Goshen says that you can put a little bit of oil um, in these tubes here to uh, ease putting the spring up. And so that's what I did. Now, let me show you what I got going on underneath. Make sure that the springs are looped or are sitting over the bottom cable that comes out of the master tube right here and that the um, little bar right here slides underneath your top cable. So that's how I have it set up right now. Now let me feed the end of the um, spring back into the master tube here. And that's as far as the spring will go. So now I have to now I have to bring the tubes all the way back up to the uh, um, master uh, cylinder or whatever you call this thing and then attach those four um, bolts uh, that go right here so i'll do that next okay so i got this uh, right side pushed back up against the master cylinder here and i kind of just had to do a balancing act of uh, pushing the spring back up into the uh, lift arm system on this side and then also uh, pulling the tube here up towards the master cylinder so i was kind of pulling and pushing on uh, both sides as they as i worked them work this back into place so i'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side here okay guys listen to this There's a few squeaks and creaks, but not nearly as bad as it was. Whew. Okay, now that I'm super sweaty, um, what'd you guys think of that lift system now? I'm definitely gonna play a before and after for you so you can compare just how much that changed. To me, it sounds so much better. And all it took was changing out that rear lift system cable. So if you guys are having that problem, maybe try that. Old, crumbly, new, old, new. Uh, so what I did, um, I just um, uh, measured uh, the little tray that these filters go in. It's about 15 by three and a hair just over three inches wide. Unfortunately, it's not a perfect uh, rectangle. It kind of bows out in the middle here. So unless you want to get really creative with it, I just cut them um, three inches by 15 inches, which one length, which the length was already at 15. So I just cut three inch strips and did them on both sides. So that's the air filters. And um, now that those are in, I could stop talking about them and uh, be done with the air conditioner. So a few of you actually brought up in the last video about the air inlet valve for the water holding tank. And this is actually something that confused me at first too when I was looking for it. And I actually videoed a lot of it, but it just got too voluminous uh, to include in the last video. And so I actually cut it out, but um, not surprisingly, a lot of you guys caught it. So the water holding tank actually has these like elbow valves and there's three of them that um, I think are supposed to act as the air inlet valves 
in lieu of having a, a hose or whatever run up all the way through the um, floor and then over into to this guy right here. There's actually no hose, there's no um, hole in the floor, there's nothing. So I think that was f uh, intentional from the factory and there's actually a little bit of caulk on the inside of that. And I think I talked about this in one of my earlier videos, there was actually some, I don't know, dirt or mud or whatever in two of these valves. It may have been like paper wasp or something, but a as one of you guys commented, it'll definitely like allow bugs or in that case, probably like wasps to get in here. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking of putting some, this is um, actually some screen, cutting it down to size and then maybe just like zip tying it or something around there to prevent bugs or, or bees or anything else for that matter, getting into your water uh, holding tank. So I just wanted to bring that up and, and address that because I also thought it was weird that there wasn't uh, an air hose um, for the water holding tank. guys so that's it for part four of the free pop-up camper series renovation um so i'm super stoked about the lift system cable and how that quieted down um, at least when we we're raising the roof up so i'm super glad that worked i'm glad i don't have to go to the back of the drawing board um the only thing else i could think of was replacing the actual cable that runs through so i'm um, like i'm just really happy that worked so as far as um uh, part five, the next video coming out, here's what I plan to do. Um, Got to get that inside kind of cleaned out, wiped out and such. And then I want to clean out the canvas and the vinyl, both on the inside and the outside. As I'm sure a lot of you know, when you go and clean off the um, canvas vinyl, canvas especially, it'll strip that waterproofing off. So we'll need to re-waterproof that. And then I hope to re caulk and re beetle tape a lot of the seams and edges on the exterior. So it'll be a little bit of cleaning, a little bit of waterproofing, and once we get all that done, that'll essentially be the whole exterior and you know all the little things that make the camper camper ready, but that'll lead into us being able to um, do the whole interior renovation and make it look new again. So hopefully we'll see you at part five. <laughs> Thank you.